Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Anime on Draft, uh, episode number 15. Um, joining me here, as always, are my co-hosts, uh, Alec. Hey, everybody. And uh, Rolando. What's up? And, of course, I'm your host this week, uh, Drew. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get right into it. I think our agenda today, we're going to be talking a little bit or a great deal about uh, some of the shows that have been premiering over like the past week, week and a half. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, we're going to catch up um, again on Soccer Quest as well as um, Restaurant to Another World and uh, Kaku, Kake uh, Gururi. Um, those are the couple of the shows that we talked about uh, last week going into summer season. But let's go ahead and start off first with our beer. Um, this week's pick was made by none, none other than uh, Alec, and it is the Kona Brewing Big Wave Golden Ale. So um, I think all of us have probably had this one before. It's one of our favorite um, session summer beers. But uh, Alec, do you want to kind of describe it a little bit and why you picked it? Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a uh, let me grab the bottle. It's a uh, it's a golden ale and uh, it's obviously made by Kona. The reason I picked it was I was out of the store and I was looking for beer um, and they had the variety pack. And well, I was like, hmm, I'm going to get the variety pack and I might as well choose it as the beer of the week as well because it's good. Everybody likes it. And I think that if anybody who listens to us haven't really tried it or heard of it, then it's definitely a good beer to check out. Um, and it's easily recommendable to tons of people so it's kind of available (laughs) everywhere too it's it's gotten a lot bigger in the brewery um as far as i've seen but i've never seen a Mm -hmm. store that doesn't carry it so it's 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 super popular uh in that respect yeah yeah and like i said it's summertime and it's really good summer session beer so yeah i mean it's brewed in hawaii like you think of hawaii you think of summertime vacation having a good time and that's really what what this beer is about i think (laughs) Yep, definitely. So let's uh, we can go ahead and pour this guy out, and uh, you know, have a have our first uh, impressions. <clears throat> I guess not um, technically well, our first impressions. I know we've all had this before, so <laughs> it's got a good color. And, I mean, it looks like a, you know what you expect of a golden ale, um, which is nice. It's that it's got that refreshing look too. You know, where you you're like, man, I'm gonna mm-hmm. take a sip of this, and it's gonna be great. Um, it looks like cider. It's the classic. Yeah, it's it's super carbonated and it's what I was going to say is it kind of it's like that classic, you know, when you think of like a not like a light beer, but like just like beer in general, you think of that nice golden color, lots of carbonation, a little bit of a head. And this, that's what you get with this. Yep. And uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know if there's any sort of like correlation they're trying to make between like the big wave and golden ale. Maybe it cascades over you like a crashing wave of deliciousness i don't know dude <laughs> but uh uh i would i could definitely like with the the alcohol content being pretty low i could have an entire six pack of these in a day and just be like that was cool because it's 4.4 percent, so it's not bad at all um yeah flavor is good drinkability is definitely high on this one mm-hmm. has a fruity smell I, my allergies are so bad today i can't smell anything so I'll uh, can you taste take it your word for that. <laughs> I can I can kind of taste it, yeah, but like in terms of smelling, no, I got I got nothing right now, nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's so. pretty refreshing, you know. Got malt, um, light citrus notes, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A little weedy. The carbonation is really really nice, though. It is like I don't excuse me. I don't think I've noticed <clears throat> before how carbonated it is, but it's uh, it's really like it's like that one we had the other day. I can't remember which one where it was like super bubbly on your tongue. Um, shoot, which one was that? Anyways, it's like that. It kind of like the, it, I feel it a lot on the sides of my tongues. Was that my the nocturnum? Might have been. I think so. Might have been. Yeah, it's like really bubbly. You really get it on. The, I get real a lot on the side of my tongue. I said tongues, and no, I don't have two tongues. Just going to clarify that now. Do you speak in <laughs> tongues? Like one of those uh, <clears throat> body piercing changer pe- modifier people who like split their tongue in half, so they're like a snake person. Is that, is that oh, yeah, what I'm you do? I'm a snake. I'm a snake. Slither little snake. Yeah, just like that, dude. <laughs> That's slug, that video, slug dude. them all. Oh, my God. 
Slug them all, dude. I'm a snake. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Uh, getting, <laughs> getting back to the getting, beer, uh, do you guys have anything anything else you want to add uh, before we rate it up? Um, just, no, I just not think really. it's highly recommended. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the, it's not super complex. There's not a lot going on with mm-hmm. it. It's just a good classic summer beer that's refreshing and easy to drink all day. I think that's, mm-hmm. we've kind of hit on what we're going to get out of it. It's not complex, like we said, or anything like that. So it's not. Uh, we'll start like with super bitter youth. either. Well, so yeah, yeah. It's it's just an overall easy, good beer. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, we'll start with you, Rolando. What do you what do you want to rate this? Um. Well. I've had this before. I get it all the time. It's like a pretty much go-to beer. Um, I mean, I'll probably give it like a 3.75 to, to good beer. Alec, what do you think? Mm, yeah, I'm probably going to give the same kind of like 3.75. Um, <clears throat> like when you think of a golden ale or like something you want, you know, in a session beer, you really don't want like super complex, heavy Lots of things. You just want to, you know, drink it down, grab another, drink it down while you're, I don't know, shooting the mm-hmm. shit with friends out back or or something with a cool breeze. And, like, you can just pick this up and keep downing them. And uh, every sip is as refreshing as the first one. So I, I, I think it's a good beer. It's not, like, amazing. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think 3.75 is is a is a good solid rating for, for this. Yeah, I'm going to keep it kind of similar. I'm going to go 3.5. Um, it's it's good um, for all the reasons that we've talked about. But at the same time, it's just it gets it's kind of boring. I mean, it's just a basic, you know, golden ale. There's nothing too interesting going on with it. But in terms of drinkability, um, you know, all the things that we've mentioned, it's 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 decent. It's not, you know, my favorite ever, but it's it's a good summer session beer. And that's one of the mm-hmm. reasons I like it. So. 3.5 for me, um, keeping it about the same as you guys. Um, anything else you want to add, guys, before we move on to our other topics? No. The Kona Longboard is also very good, and I think that is a golden mm-hmm. ale as well, right? <clears throat> I have no idea. I'm not oh, sure well, what type it is. It's also I, very I know it's good. good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I think I kind of like what you did. I'd recommend like the variety pack because um, they have a bunch of different mm-hmm. types of beer um, and yeah. they're all, you know, they're not they're not like the best I've ever had, things like that. But, you know, they're they're good, decent. Like there's none of them that I mm-hmm. would not like absolutely drink. Like if I get the variety pack, I'm going to enjoy all the different flavors. So, yeah, like the they're fire rock solid. is the IPA. And I think, mm-hmm. Alec, you said that that's like, I like the fire rock one that you like. So mm-hmm. if you're. New to Is that IPAs. the one in the green bottle? No, it's like the no. orange It's bottle. the brown. brown. It's got like the fire on it or whatever. Yeah. yeah. The oh, green okay. bottle is Castaway, and that's their pale ale. Oh, okay. okay. And that's in the variety pack as well. So. Yeah. But yeah, well, cool. definitely a good starter idea. Yeah, check out that. Uh, check out the uh, Kona Brewing. They're, um, like I said, available pretty much everywhere super popular um all their beers are are pretty much a winner um for us so go ahead and check that out and again super affordable too so that's mm-hmm. uh you're on a budget that's definitely a plus <laughs> moving on to our anime topics i think we're gonna kind of organize it this week and not like pairing or happy hour but we'll talk about premieres because there's quite a few and then uh we'll get into those shows that we're um continuing to watch or that we talked about premiering last week uh so let's go ahead and start with some of the premieres um let's start with oh i don't know um hajimete no gal um are any of you guys watching that as well i saw the first episode i did not see the first episode i was going to but i didn't so I'll give it like a brief synopsis, um, and then we can talk about it. Um, it says, you know, spring, the season of love has arrived, and it seems that finding himself a girlfriend was harder than uh, Junichi believed. Uh, to break the status quo, Junichi's friends have forced him into confessing to the gal, uh, Yame. Um, however, things do not go quite as expected, and a series of firsts begins. Um the type of show that it is um, <coughs> is uh, comedy, romance, etchy, school shonen, um, and edgy. definitely on the etchy side. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely on the etchy side. They have a. I, I found like uh, the site that I was watching it had like an uncensored version, and it was. Uh, 
uncensored for sure. <laughs> um, <and> it was, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think Rolando, we were talking about it a little bit, but I just don't, I don't really know what's the point of this show. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it a little bit more? Or? I mean, basically what happens is like, it's just like a school with like a bunch of couples and then like the typical like four dudes that includes the main character that don't have a girlfriend and they're all like <clears throat> horny as fuck. Mm-hmm. Like some of the jokes <laughs> were really making me uncomfortable. Like one of the dude's yeah. friends is like, why can't I just meet some nice little elementary school girl? And then mm. I'm like, what? And like, they're trying to be like, ha ha ha, that's illegal. <clears throat> why are you like, like, what am I going to do with you guys? But it's like, don't, why did you even make that joke in the first place? Like, it, right. it's just, it, it's just yeah. And then they started like reading porn in school and it was just like, <sighs> all right, maybe I won't uh, watch this show. <laughs> that's where the show, I mean, it's, It was kind of, like, funny. Um, The main girl seems like she'll be, like, kind of an interesting character, and it's just going to revolve around... um, I'm judging this by the open or the uh, ending. It's going to end up being a harem for the protagonist. Yeah, it looks like... just looks like all the girls are all of a sudden going to jump over him, which doesn't make any sense. Because, you know, how the show starts is, like, he's in this lame group of friends, and then all of a sudden, because of whatever, he's now, like bringing all the girls to him and you're just like why because <laughs> he's he has like no redeeming qualities either. No. he's just like this all of a sudden he's, he's super like, cool dude yeah and he's like at one point he like prostrates himself in front of the, the the main chick and it was like you know please go out with me and he's just like staring at her fucking crotch like <laughs> furiously <laughs> that was just like that was half okay. the episode yeah, it was it was literally half the episode of him on his knees staring at her <laughs> fucking junk. Um, and then she and then she's like she's like all put off by it, and then all of a sudden she's like, all of a sudden oh, she's you do like it. like I I do like that. Like what what? I <laughs> so I don't know, like, dude. It didn't make sense to me. I was like, wait, all, the, all of a sudden she is okay. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, like the the pacing was really off. I felt like when we first met her, she would be just like kind of this bitchy character. And then eventually, like, come around. But it's just, like, she went from this bitchy character to, like, this person who's, like, oh, I actually like all these things. Like, I believe it was, like, in the span of, like, two minutes she said, I don't, li- like, I'm really careful about, like, losing my virginity and, like, things like that. And then not, like, two minutes after that, she's, like, stare at my pants, you dude. Like, what? Yeah, that's what was weird because I figured from the start that she was going to be, like, oh, what they're going to do is be, like, oh, she looks like a bitch. You know, like, bitch in the sense that, like, you know, she's, like, a, a slut because mm. she's a, a, a garu or... Yeah, yeah. Um, and so... There's a couple garus in that, in the show. And so, know. like, it's, like, she, like, I, I had a feeling, like, oh, she's just going to be one of those characters that um, actually, she just likes the style and the fashion, but she's, like, one of those, like, lovey types <clears throat> that, like, is, like, super romantic or, mm-hmm. like, whatever. And I kind of got that vibe, too, because of like at the end where she's like, s- like sitting on the bed, like waiting for him to call her on her phone and like hugging the pillow or whatever. But she like wants that romance. But yeah, it's I, just weird. I don't know. It's just it's <laughs> weird character development, weird premise. I just felt uncomfortable um, for a lot of it. Yeah, it was yeah. just kind of cringy. Um, <laughs> so I'll I think what I'm going to do is cons- wait till the second episode comes out, then watch yeah. them both in a row. I mean, it might be it might be a little bit better if they like establish some things in the second episode, but I doubt it. It's one thing I'll be the, watch. Yeah, like the three episode rule yeah. for this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll watch a couple more and see where it goes. But you know, who knows? I kind of like the art style anyway. Like the art style is nice, but at the same time, it's just like panty shots and boobs, and yeah. But it is what it, it is. It just gets overplayed. Um, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Well, one half the episode is just showing her panties. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Censored. Oh, well, I guess for you, well, uncensored. I, I, but I got the uncensored. <laughs> how, did, how did they censor it uh, in the in the ones that you okay, watched? Okay, on the Crunchyroll one, it was just a picture of her face, like, chibi face, like, plastered mm-hmm. right on top of it. Mm-hmm. They have it on Crunchyroll? I didn't even see it on Crunchyroll. Yeah. I typed it wrong. But, anyway. Um... Well, 
Yeah, we'll uh, keep an eye on that one. Uh, but moving on is uh, let's talk about um, In Another World with my smartphone. Um, I'm not watching this one. Um, which one of you guys are watching? Rolando? Yeah. I don't know if Alex seen it or not. I haven't seen it, no. I have it on my queue, but I didn't get to get around to watching it. All right. Well, not yet. This one is, you know, similar premise to um, ReZero and not mm. like full premise, but like similar premise to ReZero and um, what's what's it called? Konosuba. Uh, Konosuba. Yes. Thank you. Um, where so like the main dude, he dies and then is like in a meeting with God and then God tells him like, I'm going to send you to like another world to be reborn. He's like, okay. He's like, but I'll let you have one thing that you want. He's like, can I have my smartphone work? He's like, really? That's what you want? <laughs> and then he's like, yeah. Um, and he's like, all right, well, I'll let you be able to like charge it with magic and all that crap. And, you know, and, like basically give like a way for him to use the smartphone, but like it will only like get information from, you know, earth where, where he died. <laughs> um, and so he like gets reborn and then like God also gives him like attributes that will let him use magic and then like better, I guess just overall physical abilities. So it's like he can, he's basically become like, you know, like a Kirito type, like overpowered character in this new world. <laughs> And then like beats up with like these twins and helps them out. And then they help him learn how to read because he can't read the language <laughs> of, the, of the town. Um, you know, like ReZero, right? Um, and then <laughs> it's like, it's more of like a, I would say in terms of style, it's probably similar to Outbreak Company. Mm. Um, you know, like that kind of vibe. Is it like... Just the lighthearted it's like oh, pretty okay. lighthearted it's actually uh -huh. um drew you know do you know that one show it's like uh uh shin Ryakusha no uh rook is it roku joma or something it's the one where the, like the dude has like a portal to like different worlds in his apartment and ends up oh, with like oh yeah, yeah a harem of chicks or whatever yeah. right right i know what you're talking it's about yeah. kind of, it's it's um, actually more probably going to be closer to that where like there's just a bunch of chicks he's going to meet in this new world that like will end up liking him i bet like that's just where it seems to be going yeah, that's what i wanted to ask does it like take itself seriously like uh, rezero is like kind of no. on the more serious side or is it like kind of you know more lighthearted and goofy like konosuba yeah it's more i would say the closest to it would probably be is that shin Ryakusha show and um outbreak company mm is what uh -huh. it's going to end up being just, you know, <clears throat> funny, but you know, there's going to be some sort of story behind it. I liked outbreak yeah. company. So I might like this one too. Um, Absolute territory. <laughs> I actually, I um, I, I hear outbreak <laughs> company. <laughs> I, this, that premise is actually a lot like the other show nights and magic that I'm watching. Um, it yeah, like, we can this, talk about this, that now. Yeah dude dies and then goes to another world. He doesn't talk to God, but he like, it's different cause he's transported to another world. And instead of being like a, uh, so he was an adult in the other world and then his like consciousness is transferred. And now he's like a 10 year old boy or something like that. And, uh, and he's in this world where like there's giant robots that are powered by magic and it's pretty cool. It's like, pretty lighthearted so far it seems uh, it's just been fun to watch because it's like this little kid trying to make robots basically and uh and like change how the robots are made but he's actually like an adult programmer person and so i don't know i've liked it so far there's two episodes out i think or three um but i just saw it uh this past week i just saw the first and second and then the third today so it's pretty cool but that's really all there is to it i don't know how like if it'll be a real se there, there's nothing to talk about in it. So I don't really recommend mm -hmm. it as like something we cover, but if you're looking for just something similar premise like that, that's kind of like enjoyable to watch, um, that check it out. Knights and magic on Crunchyroll is Sounds what it's pretty like, uh, action packed or, you know, something to just yeah. turn your brain off and watch people fight sort of mm -hmm. deal. 
<clears throat> yeah, it's all like the second episode. They fight this like giant monster and he's, you know, darting around in a robot and doing cool stuff. And he's like, wow, this is awesome. And then it goes back to fighting. He's like, this is so cool. And like that sort of shit, you know, typical mm-hmm. like robot fighter kind of. But it, it's it's Shonen. just enjoyable to sit there mm-hmm, and watch. Cool. So. Cool, cool. Um, were you did you say you're watching that, Rolando, or is it just Alex so far? I have not seen it. I think that's just me. Well, well, we'll keep a keep an eye on it. Um, I know um, one show that um, just came out uh, that I know everybody was excited to talk about was uh, New Game Plus. I'm not calling it New Game Exclamation Point Exclamation Point. I'm gonna call it New Game Plus because <laughs> that is what it should have been called. <laughs> um, but uh, I was uh, I was excited to get back and uh, see you know our main group of girls uh, you know making a video game. Um, so again, second season of new game, um, it came out like a little while ago, but it finally released on crunchy with like subs that were actually like doable. I think we talked about that last week. It was like, yeah, just <laughs> on, on like Google translate. Um, dude, they were hilarious. Titles or whatever. <laughs> so good. They're so good. Um, <laughs> We kind of uh, we kind of see you know what's gonna happen uh, for the rest of the season in this episode where uh, you know they the girls meet up um, they're trying to figure out you know what uh, what type of game that they want to make um, and then finally you know the problem that's or you know that's coming up is they're gonna have a contest um, to see who can design you know the best character and whoever gets picked wins you know gets to uh, be the lead character design for the next game so. Uh, hopefully next episode we get to see um, what type of game it is and then see, you know, what they come up with in terms of, you know, designing characters and things like that. I have a hunch that Alba's going to win and she's going to be, you know, thrown into this thing and like, you know, she's going to have all the struggles of, um, you know, being a lead character designer um, for the first time and, you know, after her first year basically at the company. So probably uh, looking forward to seeing that. Uh, what did you guys uh, think of the episode? I know both of you are watching this. You want to start? Uh, sure. Um, uh, I, you know, like I actually, I haven't watched it, um, because I watched the whole thing with the bad dubs and got the gist of what was going on. And I just was, I, I didn't know it was on crunchy, uh, yet, but, um, I, I agree with you though. I think that it's going to be like Alba is going to win or whatever. And, uh, and then she's, you know, we're going to witness all her struggles. Like you said, I was kind of sitting there thinking, Hmm, well maybe they should go like super realistic. And they're like, you're awful. Like this isn't good. And then she just doesn't get it and they give it to somebody else. But, um, that's not going to happen. Um, I, I liked the episode all in all. And, um, I definitely do highly recommend watching at least the first few minutes of the bad translated one just gonna say that just gonna it's just for pure entertainment it's hilarious i'm telling you it's so funny but um all in all i i think they're off to a good start it kept the same kind of vibe that i felt you know at the end of the original and um i'm looking forward to the rest of the season so yeah what do you think rolando um i'm not gonna comment on what i think is gonna happen because i know what happens so um, uh, that would just be cheating. Uh, but I do yeah. like what they've done. I thought that they, they've been pretty, um, faithful to what I've read after watching the first season. So it's pretty good, lighthearted slice of slice of life, but also, you know, like it's pretty niche, de- like work, mm-hmm. work development type of thing. So if like you're if you work in a similar field, you'll be like, oh, wow, like I can totally relate to like I, I'm a, you know, graphic artist or like a graphic designer. Like I have deadlines. I know yeah. about those. Mm-hmm. So it's <laughs> it's a good show, even if you don't work in it. So I just thought mm-hmm. um, they did a pretty good job of adapting what's going to happen. And um, I feel like they're going to do a good job of. Um, handling any anything that occurs in the next episodes. Um, so yeah, it's often. I had good uh, I had a couple I had a couple questions for you. First was, do you think that they'll be able to finish this arc uh, in a you know well developed time with t- the twelve episodes that it's getting? Yeah, for sure. I think cool. so. Um, the second was you, you said it stays, you know, pretty true to the manga and things like that. I wanted to ask this season seemed to have a lot more fan servicey um, 
parts and things like that. Like I know like the mid cap screen was like Hifumi like in her bra. Oh yeah, no, um, that's not. And in then the we manga. got like <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I didn't think so. And then like we got like the uh, thirty seconds of Ko's like panty shot like at the very beginning, like just like right up in there. <laughs> so I was it, it. So it's not really uh, no like that in the uh, in the manga. <laughs> no, no, no. That's just the studio like showing off. Just what two three page mm-hmm. flips of just her standing up showing panties. You're like, yeah, why am yeah. I reading three pages of panties with no words? <laughs> this is like a this is like a four coma manga, so there's no way that uh, they would have just had <laughs> all of that going on and it, just, it would take up all like all eight panels in one page. <laughs> dude, that's well. okay. They could do that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> right on. It's. I, I think we're definitely gonna follow this one. It's. Uh, it seems like it'll be good, and, and it, it looks like it'll have like a, at least a decent amount of story where it's not just you know cute girls doing cute shit. There's at least gonna be a, some semblance of character development, growth, and uh, a central story that they're gonna follow. So that's that's definitely a good thing. Um, so yeah, any uh, any uh, other things you want to add before we uh, move on? No, just watch no. it. Watch it. It's yeah, watch cool. it. It's good. It's exciting, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> awesome. Let's uh, let's move on and talk about now uh, Classroom of the Elite. Um, Rolando, you're watching that one? Mm-hmm. Is anyone else watching it? No, no I don't have to Explain to me uh, what it is again. So this show, I believe it's based off of a visual novel. Um, I mean, just the character mm-hmm. designs look like it. Uh, this show is... There's, there's a bunch of students that get placed into this academy that's like run by the government, and um, they are allotted points. So it's like they're they're not allowed to leave campus. They're supposed to live on campus, and it has all the stuff they need. It's like basically like a mini mm-hmm. society, mini outside world that's like confined within this huge campus, and they're basically awarded these points that they use to spend as money on their merit. And so the main character is like this kind of like, he's kind of like Kiki Gaia from, um, snafu. Um, he's just, you know, kind of like, mm. nah, like, I don't care about anything, but like that kind of dude. Um, <laughs> yeah. and he's like in this class and then there's like another character who's like the younger sister of the student council president. And, like they're both like cast off as like loners in the beginning because like they're pretty like he's like that no care attitude guy so like no one wants to approach him and then she's like <clears throat> pretty much like a bitch to everybody so no one wants to talk to her and then everybody else <laughs> is like oh wow tropes. we just got a shit ton of money let's just go blow it all on fucking playstations and all this crap <laughs> and then the next month comes around and they don't get any fucking points because all they did was like talk in class not do their homework like shit like that and so like um it like they get like a harsh reality of like oh shit like we were being judged on our merit this whole time um that kind of thing and so like they blew all their money they can't fucking um buy food and all that crap and um like the main character and like the bitchy girl kind of like had an inkling of what would happen in the beginning just because it's like why would the government be spending like giving everybody a thousand dollars a month, you know, like to just spend however they wanted. So like they like rationed right. off their points just for the whole month. Around. <laughs> and so they're like now seen as the smart ones. And um, so it's basically going to be following how these, how this class of students goes through this system. And like, I'm sure there's going to be like an underlying plot behind all of it. So I, I sounds interesting. Yeah. Sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to continue watching. It kind of sounds like it sounds like kind of like a a mix between um, Danganronpa and um, rom-com staff with the, you know, protagonist kind of acting that way. Um, Probably more towards Danganronpa, but without like people dying. (laughs) I haven't seen either of those. (laughs) I've seen the video game. (laughs) Does that count? Mm hmm. Oh, it's similar. The oh, the okay. Dagon Rampa anime is not as good as the actual game. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Right, the game, then I won't the watch game, it. I mean, it, it has a lot more. Yeah. To it, I mean, 
the the game's really good. I highly recommend uh, playing that game for sure. Um, if you like the murder mystery, um, visual novel style uh, game, it's it's got good twists and it's uh, very enjoyable. One of my one of my favorite uh, visual novel style esque games, if uh, that's what you want to call it. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, I might check that one out. It actually sounds really good. Um, from the way you've described it so probably is it on crunchy or yeah classroom of the elite cool 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 awesome so we have uh, one more premiere that we want to talk about uh the show called uh, gamers exclamation point um i'll kind of talk about the brief uh synapse uh basically what it is is there's a gamer club at this high school and um this pretty blonde um who's like super popular um within the school runs it and for whatever reason, she's obsessed with this idiot um, who we don't even know if he's good at games or not. But from the impression I got, he isn't. Um, and basically, she's <laughs> trying to get him to join the gamer club. Um, and, uh, you know, we meet a couple other characters. You know, there's one chick who, like, plays Guilty Gear. There's another guy who plays, like, CSGO. Um, and they're actually, like, really good at what they do. Like, they win tournaments to, like, fund the gaming club and different things like that. Um are either of you watching this one or I saw it uh, the first episode I have it in my queue I did not watch it yet yeah. <laughs> it it was it was okay I don't like the protagonist I don't like many of the protagonists this season I don't know what it is about this season and like lame protagonists but like from their personality all the way to their VA like it's just he's not likable um <laughs> The, the his voice actor is actually a voice actress um and it it feels like the voice doesn't fit him like when the first time i heard him talk i was like is that the blonde girl talking and it's like no it was it was him <laughs> um so i not a fan of that um the other characters seem kind of interesting um karen who is like the blonde who runs the uh the club she seems like a genuine you know good girl and like this guy is like dumb he's like i can't talk to her because she's so popular and then it's like they offer him like this great opportunity like you know it doesn't matter if you're bad at games or not just like come hang out with the club and you know play with us and different things like that and he's just like oh this all sounds great i'm gonna decline um uh, what i actually <laughs> like really i mean i really frustrated i personally see it differently so like i don't really mm -hmm. mind that this dude is voiced by you know she he's voiced by a, a female voice actress and it's not uncommon for them to cast yeah. you know a female to sound like a young boy because like he he looks mm -hmm. like a young like scrawny little like guy that you know isn't doing sports or like anything he just like plays games casually for fun and so i mean like i kind of see how like they want him to sound you know like meek and stuff but um i actually liked how so it's like you you get what he thinks in his head when he's offered this opportunity to join the club and he's like, oh, finally, mm -hmm. like, I don't have to try to find friends. Like, there's this group of people that are willing to accept me. But then he just is like, uh, no, sorry, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and like, you're just like, wait, what? Because <laughs> like, it goes completely differently from how you expect it to go, which is like mm -hmm. almost every other show like this would he would just be like, oh, yeah, like I'm going to join. And then like, it's going to go down this cliche route of like the same thing. Whereas like this one, he like somehow goes against like that norm and then actually backs up his reasoning later when he says when she when the Karen girl asks him again like she's like I really want you to join the club he's like sorry I don't take gaming like like to be like a serious competitive like competition like you guys are like I just play play it casually for fun and so like there's this kind of conflict between very serious competitive versus casual enjoyment so like he's the kind of guy that would he like there's a scene where like they're playing the counter-strike game and he's just jumping up and down on top of a car looking at the scenery <laughs> and so yeah. he's like the kind of guy that would play breath of the wild and not get anything done because he's just too busy running around and it would probably just die to like a bacoblin or something <laughs> and then um like everyone else is like oh i I beat the world speed running record 
um, for Breath of the Wild, and like so, it's like this huge like gap between like type of gamer and. I actually kind of appreciated that it didn't go how I expected because now I'm like, well, how is this going to continue? Because it starts off with like a, like everyone's like, whoa, what's happening type of deal. I don't know if like this whole like freeze frame thing um, that happened in the beginning of the episode was this thing that happened at the end of the episode or if it's going to be like this Karen girl like really pushes him to like, you know, join the club. We got to um, basically like we I, I think it's like a childhood friend um, type character who's like always asking him for help on like this mobile game or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have like kind of uh, that conflict going with him because I think he he wants to like be able to like hang out with her, or get to know her better or more, whatever it is. Um, we don't learn too much about her, but it's like he's more concerned with that with his online is, friend, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Then, he, then he is, you know, with this club and things like that. So, I, I figure, you know, going forward, um, that friend is gonna get like pulled into the club. We also saw like this, like quote, hot guy and girl couple uh, in an arcade, and we get introduced to them. I think they're gonna get pulled in uh, somehow. Um, so, kind of an episode of just introducing characters and giving us that initial um, conflict, which is it was it was a good episode. Um, the more you talked about it, the more I actually do in kind of coming around and saying, yeah, I did kind of like how it went because just like you said, it's it's kind of the same thing over and over and over and over again um, with like you know how we expect it to go. And so to change it up like that, I, I didn't really think of it that way, but it was kind of like a change of pace. Although it was frustrating because like for me, I'm like. Just get with the hot blonde. Like, what are you doing? Like, uh, so fr- frust- frustrating, but frustrating in a good way. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, you know, it's going to happen, but like they decided yeah, to throw yeah. a wrench in it at the beginning, which is like, mm-hmm. oh, well, that's kind of different. Throw you a curveball. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's nice sometimes. Exactly. So overall, I thought it was it was pretty good. So um definitely going to keep watching that one. Uh, you think you will too, Rolando? Or? Yeah. Um this didn't make me super uncomfortable or anything. Cause like, I, I think I messaged you after I watched it. Cause I was just like, what the fuck was with Hajimete no gal? And then I watched this. I was like, Oh, like this is way better. And so like, there's also that yeah, discrepancy yeah. where I was just like, well, I watched this first when I watched this. So like, I was have that a, influencing yeah. how you well, felt about it. It gave me a very higher, like much higher opinion of it. than. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. I'm going to watch the second episode. They're, they're really, just they're completely really different. Yeah, they're like really different too, though. So I don't know. But <clears throat> I'm going to check it out. I, I'll continue. Continue it. Yeah, I, I recommend it. It's it's pretty good. Um, so we'll see it uh, going forward. Uh, let's let's move on to uh, a couple of the shows that we've uh, watched the uh, second or third episodes or in Soccer Quiz's case, the 15th episode um, for this season. So we can start talking about these. But let's start off with uh, Restaurant to Another World. Um, I didn't catch up on it. It doesn't sound like all that interesting to me, but I know you guys are watching it. So you do want to go ahead and uh, talk about it? Yeah, you want to start? Um, sure. Yeah. Um, so the show is... It's kind of random, <laughs> like just in what it is. It's this restaurant a that has a door that opens to different worlds. And these random people come in and they basically are like, this is the best food I've ever had. And like, <clears throat> like right now, it's kind of like assembling the Justice League of Eaters in a sense, because it's just like all these different people keep coming into the restaurant and we keep meeting all the different like guests or whatever that they get every seven days. And uh and that's really the premise of the entire show. <laughs> like these people find the door, they eat, and then they have like like this most recent episode, the dude has like this crazy adventure, happens upon it, thinking that it's just a restaurant, and then like doesn't find the place for like a year or something like that. And then it's, it, uh, it's just, it's random. It's, yeah, cause so, he it's didn't, so random. He didn't know that the rule was it's only open on Saturdays. Because mm-hmm. he and ran out of the door. He was like, it's only open every... And then he's like, I got to go by. And he just shuts the door on and the And he comes and back. Leaves. He said it came back like 10 days later. He's like, I, it's mm-hmm. not there. Like, yeah. it's just a barn. The, like, yeah, it's just an empty building. <laughs> it kind of reminds uh, me of the, you know, the, have you seen Gate? Yeah. 
So you know how like there's the more slice of lifey moments in Gate, um, as opposed to like all the political um, stuff. Like in the town on? and stuff. Yeah, it mm-hmm. kind of reminds me of like you know similar things where it's like you've got like this person you follow this person for a bit and you find out like this whole story behind them and they develop this like this whole like thing <coughs> and like all this background and then like the climax is he ends up at this restaurant and then is super confused wondering why he's getting water for free and then like he eats food that's prepared for him and like it's just like oh this is like like he's like jizzing in his pants like in uh Shokugeki no Soma so it's yeah. kind of like he's this like, weird like why is there ice yeah. here why yeah. is there ice they're all confused and like it's just a, it's really funny because he he comes from a town where he gets shrimp and so he sees on it he's like oh they have shrimp I'm gonna I'm gonna get shrimp and he gets it and he's like this is better than how do they get it here even like it would go bad trying to get it here what I don't understand this shrimp is better than the shrimp in, at my at my home I, what's going on and he's like super confused and then and then he has no money because he chucked all his in yeah. his backstory he's like trying to so he's like at a castle and these things are attacking or attacking this wall cat uh fort that they have and he has to run back to the to gain like uh reinforcements or whatever and on the way his horse like keels over from poison with foam at the mouth and so he chucks everything including his money off of him to run faster but then almost dies and finds this restaurant and that's kind of like a quick you know spark yeah. notes of his backstory but um it's just everyone seems to have the same reaction same with the the lady who finds it in the the girl who finds it in the cave yeah and she's just like oh, why I didn't order water. It's like, no, it's free. And then it's like, so is the bread and the soup. And then they're like, oh my God, free stuff. And they look like they've been, like, like never, they've never had that before. Yeah. Or, or anything. They're just like, I'm like, you guys look like you've been starving for days, but it's pretty funny. And then now she's like the continuation of a, like her grandfather or whatever, the it's, previous, it's either her uh, grandfather person. or like maybe her mentor or something Yeah, something that used like to that. use that door to get to there. Cause she was like a little kid. They had that flashback where yeah. she was a little kid next to him at some table or something. But yeah. So now, now they were like, Oh, it's the return of, uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah. I forget what they <laughs> called her. Cause they, he always ordered the same thing. He was yeah, basically Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones though. Yeah, the, she's the female Indiana Jones now. He was the famed treasure hunter, and she's Laura Croft. Yeah, the dragon slayer. <laughs> the dragon slayer. Laura Croft, the dragon slayer. <laughs> yeah, the, dra- the dragon slayer, exactly. <laughs> but um, I like the main girl that they introduced in the first episode still. Yeah, the girl. She, girl. She, yeah, they haven't really been doing like anything like... She hasn't talked much or anything, but she seems to be a good character. Like she hasn't been annoying or anything like that. They just did a good job making her character. She's just one of those try your best type characters. Mm -hmm. I'm poor. I live in a broken church thing on rocks. (laughs) I need a bed (laughs) kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but then, you know, I don't know where they're going to go with it because they had the thing where she was like, nobody will mess with my, you know, whatever. The dragon lady oh, was saying yeah. that about that girl. So it'll be interesting to see where they go with like her backstory and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They seem to set up themselves to not just be like, yeah, this is what we do week after week. We introduce a new patrons to this restaurant. They have a crazy story and then they eat and then they leave. <laughs> like, I might be so. I might be like totally wrong here, but what this kind of reminds <laughs> me of a little bit on like a less serious note is uh, Death Parade where it's like every week, you know, we get a new story and a new dish and then we learn a little bit about them and then they go away and we don't really hear from them again. Is that like kind of right, Rolando? I I, I think you've watched uh, Death Parade, right? I haven't seen Death Parade, but if that's what oh, that okay. is, like it it seems like it'd be kind of similar. Yeah, and that's what yeah, it, when it you either. guys are describing it, that's what it reminds Watch Death Parade, though. That shit is like fire, fam. Um, if, <laughs> if this show ends up being anything uh, like that, um, like what Death Parade ended up doing, it was like there's, you know, the main characters that we see every week, which sounds like this goat girl or whatever. And then like we get one new person coming every week and, you know, doing a particular thing and then they go away. But through that, we get continual character development and like a final like overall like twist. And you're just like, oh, that was fucking cool so it was a really good show that's one of my favorite animes actually is death parade so highly uh, ever highly recommend that so yeah it's it's really good <laughs> um 
Well, cool. Um, so we got that one done. Let's talk about uh, Sakura Quest. So episode uh, number 15, we got everybody kind of getting reunited um, and back together uh, in in the town. And we get our answer to the, uh, the, t- the tourists, if that's what you want to call them, uh, who came into town uh, at the end of last week's episode. Uh, so I guess they're like... Uh, Uma hunters are like basically like chupacabra hunters. They want to see the chupacabra that is in Monoyama. They think it's real. Um, and then we talked about last week how they were trying to figure out, you know, if Airbnb would work in their town. Uh, for me, this episode kind of jumps all over the place and the pacing was really weird because it's like they talked about the Uma, the Uma people. They talked about Airbnbs. They talked about like, the uh, the old man and at the end like this like thing that was hiding in this river and then they talked about or the pond and then they're like <laughs> draining the pond there's like, there's just like too much going on I don't know if you guys felt the same way um first of all I'm gonna tell you that it's Yuma just get it right Uma. dude get it right Uma is horse in Japanese <laughs> Uma um and then <laughs> uh, you they're you, horse you hunters MAs. They're they're fucking Whoa. horse hunters. They're in the wrong town. Well, um, <laughs> they need to go to Spain. <laughs> yeah, they need Catch to go horses. back to Spain. They've got horses yeah. over there. Um, I just thought, yeah, it was a little like weird. Just like how like what happened in the episode. Um, but the the overall I guess effect of it was like we did get like a lot of random character development. Like Ririko got a lot of character development in this episode. Um, Yoshino got a little bit and then we kind of got like, you know, some backstory, like we're starting to get some backstory and then like the, the tourism board director guy. Cause like mm. clearly he's trying to hide something mm. um, that's in the lake that they're draining out right now. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, there's like so much that happened, but like for some reason, like one of the main things that I can remember from this episode is just the the horrible English from like the thirsty singles <laughs> club dudes oh that are God. trying to hook yeah. up with the two oh Spanish girls. God. It's like oh <laughs> my Eat ugh. sushi, it's so good. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then like oh he's just God. like I I come, you marriage me, like yeah. what? She's marriage like, my like empty, the empty heart. hole <laughs> the empty hole just like <laughs> oh, man. it was it was cringe english it was really bad it was oh my you God. would think I they would have the sand the sandal voice actor guy like do some of their english for, like, like his english is like actually decent like when he does like the uh the previews for the next episode it's like it's not great mm-hmm. but it's not like that bad you know what i mean it's <laughs> yeah. just like also mm-hmm. like the the common language that they're all speaking is english <laughs> it's just like yeah it's like, like yeah clearly japanese people like don't learn spanish and then spanish pe- people don't learn japanese so it's just like all right well i we'll mean the english, common language is english. english let's speak broken english with one another you'd you'd think though if they're like we're going to japan they'd at least have like learned a little bit or have something where they could like try to talk in japanese and then they're Whoa. just both going to have broken English and not understand anything because no one's actually speaking English. As, <laughs> as Sinai, Sinai kind of was like, well, they do have these amazing translation apps uh, um, that work nowadays. <laughs> Although they, t- they work to some extent. They didn't use them. They work to some extent, but not like to the whole extent. But it, They have some yeah. really good ones now, though, that they're, I guess, coming out with that you can't get as people. You have to get them through travel... Um, travel companies or whatever because they're like i don't know fifteen hundred dollars each or something like that there's no way they just give that for free yeah and so they'll give them to these (laughs) travel agencies now and then you if you go through their travel agency they like loan it out to you while you're there and so you like talk into it and then it repeats it back and they have some algorithm i don't know and apparently it's like pretty crazy Hmm. good i've I've seen a video of one work yeah some of them are really good the ones on your phone are all pretty pretty they're pretty shitty they're pretty. I mean, it's they, like they did I might put well one in front, of, in front of Google Translate and did new game. So that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one other thing that I was thinking about. I almost forgot. <laughs> God. 
Jesus. When, uh, one other thing that I was uh, thinking about um, as we we're talking about the episode that another total disjoint was Rico talking to the one tourist, and then she's like, "I went to all these places, and now she's having this existential crisis. Like, I've never left Monoyama, and I want to do that now." And then like the grandma being like. I've never thought about leaving. And so it was like just another thing to like add to the pile. So it's just like, this is so much going on this episode. It's like, it was overwhelming. It's just like, why, why did we do all this? Like all of a sudden, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's probably just like, yeah, it's probably just, um, like a consequence of the events. So obviously like Ririko doesn't understand why Yoshino says like, Oh, like I now kind of appreciate my hometown and feel like I have a place to return to. And, like, she's never really thought mm-hmm. about it because she's never left Monoyama. And so now that there's these random-ass foreigners in her town that she's, like, getting to know and, like, traveling all over the place, she's like, huh, like, maybe it would be nice to travel and see what life is like mm-hmm. el- elsewhere. Mm-hmm. To leave my hometown? Yeah. Well, for sure, I'm curious to see what's going on in that pond. Um, yeah. Everybody seems to know about it. All, at least all the old people seem to know about it. Even the um, grandma. Doku, um, yeah, grandma, um, crazy old chupacabra man. They all uh, <laughs> they all know what's going on there, but don't want to <coughs> don't want to talk about it. Um, and she, the grandma, hiding, doesn't even seem to believe it or whatever, because he's like, it returned, and she's like, don't say crazy things or something like that. And uh, or whatever she said. Well, she's but like, don't call me in the like fucking middle of the night to tell me about with this nonsense. stupid thing. That she's like, I don't do. care if you yeah, almost drowned. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she says she's so okay. heartless. Dude, like, actually, what, what, what I don't drown. understand. <laughs> <laughs> what uh what i don't understand though is like you know they drain this pond like every like 50 60 years whatever it is why are you like hiding stuff in, in there the pond that you don't want found if, if 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 you know that that's like gonna happen you know what i mean like, maybe he was like nah, i'll be yeah, dead that, by then maybe <laughs> i'll let somebody else deal with it i think they're supposed to do it know, more who, than who more often than that but he probably yeah. got them to not do it like every time it came up or whatever mm. Is what I'm guessing. Now they have to do yeah, it because the bass are destroying the ecosystem. Yeah, is what the they bass said. are yeah, taking yeah. over. They're gonna have was, a lot of black bass. Should have gone. He should have gone fishing more. He should have gone fishing more. You know, prevent uh, prevent them from needing to drain it. There's yeah, they should have fished and had fish. more summer cookouts. You know, not enough people there. <laughs> no, yeah. he just needs to be old man fisherman like every day catching ten fish. <laughs> hmm. Solve that. But, solve that ecosystem problem. Exactly. One bass at a Fishing. time. One bass at a time. <laughs> All about the bass. About the bass. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Um, anything? Anything <laughs> else you guys uh, want to talk about? Um, nothing else that I can really think of really. for this uh, no. for this episode. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, kind of kind of set Rolando, up you'd... for uh, what's coming. What's that? R- Rolando, you did mention that. You were like, of course, the the Latina lady is like, let me help clean. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh, it, I, was, I just thought it was like kind of odd that like, oh, the, the girls, they go to clean <clears throat> the house that they're going to use as like a and b And then one of the Spanish chicks that was hanging Spanish, out with Ririko is like, I come to help clean. And it's like, really, you're going to you know, pull that stereotype? Like, obviously, <laughs> she's not like, you know. Mexican or like South American or like whatever, but like it's still yeah. like all right, whatever. I didn't notice it, but when he said it, I thought it was kind of funny. I was just like, lol. But um, yeah. So, anyways, wanted to mention that. Otherwise, yeah. interesting. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see where it leads to. I'm curious as uh, what's going on in that lake um, and why you'd want to hide it so badly. Dead bodies almost die trying to hide it. <laughs> Dead bodies. I mean, you know who knows? How many people did Maybe he kill? Maybe it's a real chupacabra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some say it's a water. He sealed animal. the chupacabra there with like a sealing jutsu, and you know he was trying to break the seal <laughs> just then, but you know. <laughs> it's the nine-tailed anyway. chupacabra. <laughs> Oh God, the the <laughs> rarest of chupacabra. Oh my God. Um, it's anyway, totally. <laughs> we got uh, one more show to talk about. Um, the gambling school, um, Kake Gurui. Um, I, I am watching it. Rolando, I think you're watching mm-hmm. it as well. Did you watch it in the correct order this week? Yes, there was only one new episode <laughs> that came the, out. So yes, I watched it in the right order. Right. 
<laughs> exactly. <clears throat> um, I really like this show. Um, I don't know how you feel about it, but this show is like really interesting to me. I mean, it's kind of predictable where it's like, you know, somebody's going to be cheating at the game that they pick to gamble with. But it's like trying to figure that out. And then um, I just really like the characters. I think the characters are really interesting. Uh, and then we found today that our main character, the uh, heroine or whatever, she is actually, you know, not this god and she can lose, which which I like. Yeah. You know, I, I figured they would they would have her do that eventually because, I mean, she she talks about in like the first or second episode where she loves the chaoticness. She loves the randomness of gambling. And so when there is that chance to lose due to luck and not just like cheating or skill or things like that, that's like what basically turns her on. Uh, <laughs> that's probably the most appropriate way to put it um with how uh this show is uh, portrayed and things like that but um it's it's cool that she was actually vulnerable and lost um and we can see you know it or it well, we don't really we don't know, know if it was the luck, was luck or not or if they yeah. actually cheated because she does bring up the fact that there's a chance that the student council actually changed the result of what happened right exactly um which was interesting. Um, we see, you know, too, in this episode, you know, how much power and influence the student council has. And even though if you're on the student council, you know, it's you're still fe- fearing the president because like she walks in and she's like, just play, bitch. Like, we're here to watch, you know, and she was like trying to like cheat and like call off the bet and things like that. And yeah. She's like, nope, you're going to have to deal with the consequences <clears throat> of your actions. And basically she's like, y- you what I got from it was like, you have to trust me. Like I have I not that I have your back, but like I'm not just gonna let this new person come in here and like and run my school essentially like sort of in the hierarchy of everything exactly exactly because i mean she already beat one of the student council members um it was like the lowest tier of member like she didn't even earn her way on she paid her way on um but you know it was she's not just the the, the student council president just not gonna say you know hey you're not just gonna come in here and run train on all of my officers and things like that you know we i run this shit basically right. Um, so she ends up, uh, losing, losing a lot of money and becoming, uh, one of the class pets, which was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Because it's funny because, you know, all the girls like walk up to her and then like, it's clearly this power trip thing where they're like, Oh yeah, we, we don't care about you. You're just a stupid cat. Blah, blah, blah. And then like, she turns it around and just like, Oh, that's, that's great. Like, it's cute to be a cat. And then like, starts like you know, like crawling on the floor and like meowing. And then they're all like, they're like, oh, uh, uh, like they don't know how to deal with it. Cause it's like, oh, they don't get the reaction that they expect. Like they just want to mm. see her like all like be like Huffy the other chick cry. that are, gets all pissed and like crying and all that stuff. But it's like, mm. it's clearly right. a power trip for them. It's like, they're clearly like people that wouldn't bet everything. Like, like Yumiko would like in a, in a whole match, mm-hmm. like, so right. it, it goes to show like the the strength of her character versus the you know the rest of the class all the other the people hive mentality yeah because like they're clearly just there like they they would just sit there to protect themselves and like they don't care if they're winners or losers they just don't want to be you know the bottom. Well, I, I think Yumiko like she like. Yeah, she she doesn't really care about money. Like we've just seen her like throw money away. Basically, um, she's in it more for like the the chaos and the you thrill, know, the love of the games, and and she she gets off on on that. Even if she literally loses, she's gets like, off on it, phys- gets phys- off on physically cooking? getting off on it. <laughs> no, on gambling, not cooking. So this is, is lewd cooking. gambling. I mean, pretty, pretty much. much. Um, nice lewd gambling. Awesome. <laughs> Las Vegas. At least it's like kind of like tame fan service, at least now. Whereas, like, you know, the uh, what Hajime, Hajime to Gal or whatever was like that was just just showing badge in your face over the top. Like, <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, this seems like a like a fan service, but it's a little, little more tame. <laughs> yeah, definitely. A yeah. I mean, I really <laughs> like the show, but uh, and tie the, this. <laughs> This is this is the show for me this season so far where it's like I don't want the episode to end and I'm not like looking to see like how far along it is. I'm just like on it for the ride. And it's like, you know, really cool to see, you know, learn about a new game. Um, all the games, you know, so far have been 
kind of interesting to say the least. Yeah. Um, except for like the two deck two deck matching that was kind of boring. But um, you know, the game that they played this week was really cool. And then finding the ways that you know everybody's cheating. You know, it is what it is. Um, yeah. But you know, finding ways around that. It, it reminds me a lot of. Um, what is it? Um, no game, no life sort of deal. <laughs> but at least, you know, our protagonist or heroine this time is a little bit more vulnerable yeah. than uh, Sora is in uh, No Game, No Life. So and I, that's one of my favorite animes of all time, too. So yeah. this, it, it kind of reminds me of this, but it's a, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, and I like, you know, the student council battle uh, royale type anime uh, that this definitely is. So I'm definitely looking forward to uh, more episodes of this. Yeah, they do Does a the good protagonist- job. Of- What's up? Does the protagonist always get plus minus zeros on everything? No. Well, I was about oh, to mention. I, don't like I was about to mention how like um, they do a good job of this show in making something that seems a little trivial, like interesting by like kind of you know, l- like easing you into like random mechanics and like explaining how shit goes. And like I felt like that's something that Saki did well with um, with Mahjong, even mm-hmm. though like. Mm-hmm the way like shit went down in that show ended up being more shonen because it's like, Oh, there are these random powers that like some people had. (laughs) This show is more like, how are they cheating? And like, how do you defeat it? Like essentially. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, I like that whole, like, Oh, like it's interesting how they made what's essentially roulette. Um, like, you know, like cheatable and all that stuff. It's not as cheatable mm. as in uh, Persona 5, but... Nene dozo ikimasho. Anyway. Um, that's, uh, I think that's everything we wanted to talk about today in terms of anime. Um, do you guys want to add more. anything? Uh, yeah, you, I, I actually forgot to mention that I actually did watch the first episode of the Ballroom show. The Ballroom A Yokos... Yokos? Yo, yeah, Yokoso. Yokoso. Yeah, and um, lewd dancing. Actually, no, no, it's not at all. Like, uh, it's dancing just dancing is like, lewd already. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> it, it's not like it's not ecchi. <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> but so far it's cool. If you like those sports shows, it kind of reminds me of um, Baby Steps more than like other ones, I guess. But it's it's very similar. The kid like he doesn't really know what he wants to do, and then he finds his passion for dancing, and now he wants to be a pro. You know, it follows that same premise. Um, Mm -hmm. and he works really hard. Uh, the, the, so far the, the main dude doesn't seem annoying or anything like that. His teacher is kind of funny and the interactions with all the people have been, you know, pretty good. And then there's that, you know, one girl who's already super good. So it's just, it's like almost this, like very similar to baby steps in that regard. But so far I've liked it. I really liked the first episode. Is the music good? He's going to get paired up with her and she's going to be like Sundere and... No, so far she, well, first she was like, why are you here just because? And then he was like there the whole time and she's like, wow, you're doing really good. Here, let me help you. And then she started helping him. And so I think they're going to get paired together from there. I don't know where it's going to go. Maybe the, you know, they'll have an actual decent relationship and she won't be like, Ugh, and it'll be more like baby steps. But, and then you asked, is the music good? Um, yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> I'd have to go back and like, <laughs> listen. Um, so... I'll, I'll let you know. It'll probably be I'll, interesting I'll to see when they uh, do like, they'll probably like go to like a tournament or something and like the different mm-hmm. dances and music for that will probably be pretty good. I, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. They've got like, it, they're like, Oh, there's competitions. And so his plan is to like go to competitions and be a pro like the teacher. Mm-hmm. And so I'm interested to see like how they do the, the competitions. Cause I know in like baby steps, it's, you know, the tennis matches are super, uh, um, what's the word? Um, not stylized, intense. but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they make them super intense, even though, like, if you watch, like, regular tennis, there are points where it's, like, super intense, but then there's times, you know, where it's just, like, going back and forth, and then when you get down to it. But, like, they, and they have, you know, they drew the lines, and they did all that stuff. My 100 by 100 uh, square. Control. Like, control, <laughs> yeah. My 89, 81 by 81 control. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, shut the hell up. So I'm wondering if they're going to do crap like that it's not like it's by 100 by 100 imagine 100 squares i'm gonna put it in that tiny little box over there it's 
it's too much. I can't concentrate that much. I have to lower my control. It's like, shut the fuck up. Anyways, the, that's just one of the, one of the things from that show that triggered me. Otherwise I love that show. Um, but yeah, anyways, the ballroom show so far, if you like those sports shows, it's, it's pretty good. I've liked it for the first episode. So I might yep, check it that's out. That's all I had. Well, I think, uh, that kind of wraps it up for, uh, us this week, episode 15. Um, unless you guys have anything else. Nope. Nope. Let's uh, go ahead and plug our uh, social media and things like that. Uh, go to, go ahead and check out the WordPress, animeondraft.wordpress.com. It uh, has links to all our uh, social media sites, um, social links media. to the podcast, different things like that. So please uh, check it out, like, subscribe, all those uh, good words. <clears throat> um, check us out on Twitter, at Anime on Draft, uh, SoundCloud, iTunes, as well as YouTube. Just go ahead and search for uh, Anime on Draft and uh, everything will be available for you there. Um, also, please uh, check out the uh, Kona Brewing Big Wave Golden Ale, as well as all the Kona Brewing um, beers. They're all super excellent. Mm -hmm. um, I think next week's episode, uh, we're going to maybe talk about this and narrow down some shows uh, now that the premieres are out of the way. We'll probably uh, go ahead and watch all the shows that we've been watching, kind of maybe narrow it down, get back to our uh, regular format that we're kind of used to. Uh, so look forward to that. But uh, other than that, uh, you guys uh, have anything, or should we uh, we close it out? I think that's it. That's it. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us for episode 15. Uh, this has been your host, Drew, uh, as well as uh, Rolando and Alec uh, signing out for this week. Catch you later. Bye. Bye. Ah! Bye. <laughs>